Stephen A. Smith. I'm chilling. Doug Gottlieb. If we're okay with Simone Biles saying, hey, couldn't go tonight, mental health. We can be okay if LeBron says the same thing. She's the greatest gymnast going. He's the greatest basketball player going. Why do we have sympathy for Simone Biles, but we wouldn't have sympathy or empathy for LeBron James? It's called double standard. And Marcellus Wiley. So I do know that Doug Gottlieb and Stephen A. Smith quietly don't got no love for each other. No love. For Gottlieb and Smith, no love lost. What I can tell you is this. Numerous coaches, black coaches, mm. called me expressing how they took issue with that podcast taking place. And I think you know enough to know that that's true. Some of them felt very salty about that. We certainly are not blaming J.J. Reddick. And when Smith said this, Gottlieb responded by stating, and I quote, Let me state this really carefully. Stephen A. Smith is a race baiter. He is disgraceful. Saying that on national TV, disgraceful. J.J. Reddick and LeBron James are clearly friends. They have a relationship. They have mutual respect for one another. The only one who's making it out to be a racial thing is Stephen A. Smith. He is creating this. This is honestly pure evil. That's what bad people do. So what's the, what's the charge? The timing. You did a podcast with a white guy while a black head coach was under scrutiny on the hot seat. Is it, I, gotta go court, I gotta go court for that. <laughs> Smith would go on further. You take all of those things into account. This does not look good. That you got like, and, and what I was saying on the air with Wendy last week and Molly was that couldn't have started it during the playoffs. Couldn't have started it after Darvin Ham goes to job. <laughs> Could, did you have to start it in the middle of the but damn season that, that, when he's on the hot seat? Because why? That's what some of the coaches were saying. What I'm saying is you are a person known for being mindful and cognizant of the optics. How could you possibly think that was going to look good? As would Marcellus Wiley in reacting to all of this. Like, dog, nobody told my black head coach to not coach us to a championship. Like, you can outplay that indictment, right? You can outplay the scrutiny. You can outplay that house seat, hot seat coach. Don't put that on me. Gottlieb would continue targeting Smith saying, and I quote, this is just as bad as the perception that President Trump stokes the white nationalist flame. Same thing. There's no difference. No difference. None. Making it, excuse me, making it out to be somehow a racial thing. How could you do a podcast with JJ Reddick because they're friends and he respects him? LeBron James is also friends and respects Ty Lue who coached him to an NBA championship. That one's okay because Ty Lue, former NBA player, is black. J.J. Reddick, former NBA player, is white. How is that any different? You're not allowed to be friends with a white person? It was weird. It's so stupid, this race conversation. Um, what Doug Godley was mad at is simple. He was mad that Stephen A. Smith injected race into this. Is Stephen A. Smith a race hustler? Is Stephen A. Smith a race baiter? Absolutely. He's not alone. And when they do it again, I will call them out. Um, and what do I mean by that? This is... People get in their feelings. I'm not a feelings type person. Matter of fact, my therapist say I need to get in my feelings a little bit more because a race baiter or a race hustler is someone who unnecessarily injects race into conversations or unnecessarily makes a conversation based on race when it has nothing, and I mean nothing, to do with it. More from Doug. When they hired Max Kellerman, there were two people up for that job, me and Max Kellerman. Stephen A. Smith didn't want to have me on that set, probably because I would call this bull that he's doing. We didn't have any negative relationship. I had no negative feelings towards him, but this stuff, gross. Smith would rebuke this. He said, quote, that he was a candidate in 2016 and it came down to him and Max Kellerman. That's a damn lie. And now Stephen A. would respond to Doug Gottlieb. I don't dislike him. I don't like him. I don't really know him. I don't have much use for him. Just like he apparently has no use for me. But I never discussed him. He has said some BS over the years. I don't bother him. But this guy goes on his show on Thursday accusing me of being a race baiter for reporting that black NBA coaches condemn J.J. Reddick's podcast with LeBron James. That's who Doug Gottlieb is. Really? You? You? Really? 
I mean, you got to be kidding me. So he misquoted me. He misrepresented and, 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 and lacked context or didn't provide context to what I was saying. Once again, no issue with J.J. Reddick. No issue with the podcast. No issue really with LeBron James doing the podcast with J.J. Reddick if it were not at a time when Darvin Ham was on the hot seat. That's all. But Doug Gottlieb, by the way, a highly intelligent dude from what I can tell, refused to mention that. That had to be on purpose. He's not stupid. It had to be on purpose. Let's pause here. If you think... As Marcellus Wiley eloquently put, and I completely agree with, if you think that Doug Gottlieb is completely irrelevant and you think he means nothing, why respond to this then? Why give credence to it? I would say it's because, hypothetically, if Doug Gottlieb was a bigger name than Stephen A. Smith is making him out to be, and let's say this was front page news. But it wasn't. This is media beef. But what Stephen A is doing by saying he's a nobody, but well, if he's a nobody, then don't respond. Don't waste your time on a nobody. As we stated last week, and I reiterate, Doug Gottlieb missed the mark here, okay? From awful announcing. Stephen A. did bring race into the conversation, but he never claimed anyone had an issue with the podcast because Reddick is white. In the first take clip Gottlieb was responding to, Stephen A. clarified the black NBA coaches he spoke to did not have an issue with the podcast because Reddick was white. They had an issue with the podcast because they felt LeBron was undermining Darvin Ham. And that is, you know, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. If other coaches felt that way, it can certainly be perceived that way. We all have feelings. We all react to things differently. If you all who were watching this just thought it was a fun podcast talking X's and O's, go for it. You are totally entitled to that as well. Smith would go on to say it was a black on black thing, but you've got other folks who will remain nameless working for other networks, Doug Olly, with their irrelevant blank selves popping their junk. And the fact of the matter is it has absolutely positively nothing to do with that. It's about that the fact that this situation ended up looking the way that it looks optically. Again, beauty's in the eye of the beholder. You calling me a race baiter? You're not the first white person to do that. You won't be the last. I got news for you. Some black folks call me a sellout. Which one is it? Could it be that I'm a guy that marches right down the middle and I prioritize being fair? That's what I think it would mean. What's the matter, bro? You ain't getting enough viewers, listeners? What's up? Is that what this is about? You keep this up, you'll be lucky to have a black player at Green Bay, Wisconsin. Or Wisconsin, Green Bay. That's not what I said. Don't misrepresent me. Don't come at me like that. So one thing that I thought really stood out was Stephen A. like tripling down on the point that no one can have an opinion on this unless they are black, which I thought was quite weird. If this is what he is reporting, then there's no reason to doubt it. He has connections with so many people in so many different front offices and so many coaching staffs, blah, blah, blah. And it could be a coach, could be the, a player, you know, executive, it doesn't matter. If he is being told this by numerous coaches, let me just say this real quick. They have a right to be ticked. They do. I'm sorry. If someone puts in more time than JJ did at the professional level, which is none. And I gave this example last week, but Sam Cassell, who's been an assistant for like 15 years, Hasn't got a head coaching job yet. It feels very Eric B. Enemy of the NBA. And yet you get passed over for JJ. And the math certainly to the viewer's eye is mathin because you have LeBron who teams up with JJ to do a podcast. Let me be very clear. And this isn't even pulling back the curtain. If you work with people on a podcast, you're talking a lot. 
let's say the bronze schedule is packed. They're still talking every now and then to set up times and strategically go over what they want to talk about in that show. A majority of the time, some could be winging it. I know like the, you know, I remember hearing it because I listen to sports radio all the time, but the uh, advertisement for like David Spade's podcast is like, yeah, we're just going to riff. Like, okay, I'll take your word for it. You guys are riffing. You guys aren't planning the show. You guys are just going to talk about what's in the news. Or you say, hey, we're going to talk about this story and this story and this story just have a take. That's it. Totally fine. But I, as someone who has produced shows, hosted shows, reached out to people, you know what you're going to bring up and you know what you're going to talk about, which leads me and others to believe they were communicating a lot in order to build the show or the producers were talking to them to build the show. With that being said, how would I feel If I was an assistant for 10 years and I see somebody with zero coaching experience who uses his platform in media, granted he is a former player, well over a decade, established, accomplished, let's be real. Jersey number retired at Duke. Really solid three-point shooter. And he uses his media venture to then team up with LeBron and LeBron's media venture to launch this podcast, build a relationship, and then he's named head coach, I would feel some type of way. Like, let's be very honest about this stuff. Let's be really, really blunt. And how would you feel if you were in that position of being an assistant for eight years, 10 years, 12 years, and you think through the connections you made and the network that you have that you could be in the running for this and then they don't even call you because they go with somebody like that. Like, I would feel some type of way as well. And you would feel some type of way as well. So I understand where they are coming from. All that being said, Doug Gottlieb, I have to believe, I have to believe, saw this quote, did not watch it, and misinterpreted it completely. Like it flew completely over his head. Because let's just be fair. Stephen A has a right to defend himself here because this was an error. It was a lapse in judgment. We all make it. It's cool. And instead of doubling down, what Doug Gottlieb should probably do is apologize because he's making himself look terrible and he is no longer a pundit. He is the head coach of a college basketball team. Probably going to make them look bad as well. 